What's up guys, welcome to Paul's Hardware. Today I'm going to be building this epic gaming PC featuring some of the fastest hardware currently available, like the Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core processor and the Radeon RX 6900 XT in the Red Devil variant by PowerColor. Now full disclosure, right from the get go, AMD offered to sponsor this video and provide the hardware for this build. They said I could also give it away to you guys afterwards, so that's great. And they have a special message for those of you who are actually in the market for a high-end graphics card right now. Excellent. So before I put this build together, I wanted to talk quickly about pricing because that has been a sticking point for a lot of people when trying to build a gaming PC. So if you've just been watching the market for the past year and you're finally at the point where you've saved up some money, you're ready to drop some cash leading right into the holiday season, and you've got your sights set on a high-end build, then you might be considering something similar to what I've assembled here. And I'm just using PC Part Picker to take a look at the list and the prices. We have a 5950X, which is finally widely available, the 16-core 32-thread mainstream CPU you from AMD and it's uh, dropped even below its MSRP of 750 bucks available for 730 right now at Newegg. And then we have the rest of our components. I'm going to go over them individually in just a moment, but you can take a first quick look at them here. Please note for some of the fractal parts, they're not quite available yet, so I've had to input the price here, but it should be at least in the ballpark of what we're expecting. Same goes for the G-Skill memory kit. But our price total is already $2,360 and you might have noticed I did not add one key thing, the video card. If you're building a system like this in the three to $4,000 range, then you basically have two options when it comes to the fastest graphics cards that are currently available. And that would be the RTX 3090 from Nvidia. So let's take a quick look at what those are currently selling for. The least expensive listing is this MSI variant, which is $3,000. And even if I click on the $3,000 listing at Amazon, it's not even directly available from Amazon. So you're buying it from a third party seller, which is sometimes a little sketchy. So it should be noted that PC Park picker is not an exhaustive listing, but it is pretty good at uh, pulling from a bunch of different retailers and showing current available prices. I literally went down this entire list of RTX 3090s that are currently supposedly in stock, and all of them are somewhat in stock at Amazon, but they're all in the three dollars to $4,000 price range, and you can't even buy them directly from Amazon. You have to buy them from these third-party sellers like Deal Targets or ST Cool Line or Union Group that you've probably never heard of before. So let's take a look at the other fastest graphics card currently available, which is the 6900 XT. And the cool thing about the 6900 XT is that the highest end variants, which are typically labeled as Ultimate or some variety thereof, use the Navi 21 XTXH GPU die, and that can hit really, really high clock speeds, both out of the box if you're getting one of these really nicely designed variants like the Power Color Red Devil, or for extreme overclocking where these cards have been setting records uh, going back for the past several months. And perhaps the nicest thing, if you've been on the hunt for a graphics card for a really long time, is these are actually in stock. There's a handful available between $1,700 and $1,800, and although this least expensive Sapphire Nitro Plus variant is out of stock currently at Newegg, the next step up, the ASRock OC formula, is available for $1,700, and do note that you get Far Cry 6 and Resident Evil 8 with the purchase right now, and that's not a bad add-on. And here we have our Power Color Red Devil Radeon RX 6900 XT available, in stock, $1,800, add to cart, ships from and sold by Amazon. And you might look at this and say, Paul, that's $1,800, that's still a lot of money. I completely agree with you, and that's why I'm giving this system away too, for those of you who can't currently afford something like this. But for those of you who can, it is a much more compelling price than the three to four grand that you currently have to pay for an RTX 3090. Even if you were to compare it to the next step down from Nvidia, the RTX 3080 Ti, those are currently starting for $1,892, and then they go up to two grand and more. And even here, you're once again gonna have to deal with third-party sellers on Amazon, whether you're talking about this EVGA variant or the MSI. That said, we're gonna add the Red Devil Ultimate to our build here, and now we have the full list here. So we are building a system that uh, retails for $4,160 today. That's pretty high end, but I'm really excited to get it all put together. Okay, let's get back to our traditional parts rundown because uh, this is this is such a nice pile of parts we have here. Big thank you to Fractal. They jumped in a little bit after the build was planned and they uh, added the Torrent computer case, which has been just so well received across the board. They had a slight issue with the fan controller on this, so they stopped sales of it, but they are fixing that issue and these cases should be back on the market really soon. Just check any of the initial reviews on this case. It's really well designed and it has excellent, excellent airflow. Speaking of airflow, Fractal sent an entire set of their RG 
RGB fans, they're Prisma RGB fans in 140 millimeter variants, 120 millimeter variants, and these crazy big 180 millimeter designs, which can fit two at the front of the torrent case. So even though we got the gray variant of this case, which I think has a really nice finish, we are going to be maximizing the RGB via all of those fans. We also have the Lumen S36 cooler, which is a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler from Fractal, which has a nice clean design here on the CPU pump block, I will say. And then we also have the Ion 2 Plus Platinum 860 watt power supply, which should be more than enough wattage for our needs. This is the Ion Plus 2 variant, which has a slightly different design for some of the aesthetics all around, but a really nice, solid, and fully modular power supply. Our core AMD components are going to be, of course, the Ryzen 9 5950X, basically the fastest desktop processor that you can currently get without dipping into the high-end desktop uh, platform where AMD has their Threadripper series, of course, but not talking about that today. PCIe 4.0 support, 16 cores and 32 threads. This is absolutely a beast. And I feel like it has an excellent combo factor, the Ryzen and Radeon grouping uh, to go along with our power color. Radeon RX 6900 XT graphics card. Power Color has consistently made some of the best designed third-party models of uh, AMD Radeon graphics cards, and they have continued it with their Red Devil design for the 6000 series. And again, note that Ultimate Radeon RX 6900 XT, that means it's the XTX H variant, which is gonna run at higher clock speeds. So I'm really excited to see what this card can do when I do the uh, follow-up video, which is going to also include the giveaway and some testing on this system. Our motherboard is right here. This is the X570S Aorus Master from Gigabyte and the nice thing about this is the new S variant of the X570 chipset doesn't require active cooling. Gigabyte already had a passively cooled variant of the X570 motherboards on their Aorus lineup, but that was like their highest end board, so it's really nice to have the S variant because it just removes one more cooling fan from your system that might uh, make a little bit of noise from time to time. And beyond that, this board is absolutely packed with features. It's got all the bells and whistles that you could possibly want for a high-end build like we're putting together today. Rounding things out, we got some memory and some storage. Uh, let's start with the storage, the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. This is the newer variant again. They had a Rocket 4 before, now they have the Plus, and uh, this is a two terabyte NVMe SSD. It's PCIe Gen 4. The read and write speeds on this thing are absolutely absurd. 7,100 megabytes per second, 7.1 gigabytes per second reads, and 6,600 megabytes per second writes. That's, that's crazy. That's actual PCIe Gen 4 bandwidth needed in order to support that level of performance from this drive, and two terabytes is a good capacity. And then we've got the Trident Z Royal Elite kit of memory right here. This is G-Skill's newer design, which has RGB, of course, and uh, I'm gonna call it tessellation as well on the outside, and it's very shiny and flashy. I prefer the silver finish on these a little bit more so than the gold, but this is DDR4 3600 cast latency 16 kit, and that pretty much rounds out the vital components. Oh, we do have a couple more tucked in here. These were a little bit of a late addition, but we wanted to finish things off with some cable extensions so everything looks really clean and nice for whoever wins this system. So these are some gray cable extensions. And we got two kits because we needed enough to support all the PCI Express uh, extension cables and the CPU supplemental power. Well, that was a fair amount of exposition, but now you guys are fully appraised of all the details and nuances of this build, and I have my trusty screwdriver, so let's get started. All right, let's get a closer look at this Fractal Torrent case. It did get a little bit banged up in shipping, but that appears to just be the box. And we had like the perfect timing for the final piece to arrive for uh, this build, which is this replacement kit. So this is the fan hub that Fractal has been shipping out to people who bought the case when it first launched. It was available for a very short period of time when the reviews went up. And then Fractal had some really small amount, I think like four people who said that they had an issue with the fan hub. Fractal said, you know what? We want to nip this in the bud. So they're shipping these to people who already got the case or offering refunds if people would prefer that option. So we will be swapping that in once we have access to the fan hub that's already in there. And in a time when not every manufacturer is behaving uh, in a way that we would say is the best in terms of issues like that popping up. It's nice to see Fractal doing the right thing from the get-go and making sure that they're shipping a product that is good and doesn't have any issues with it. And as I already mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are plenty of reviews on this case demonstrating its cooling performance as well as just other, other nice features, I suppose. I have this completely upside down, so let's flip it over. And here we have the reveal. And it's backwards. Oops. Love that. 
Right off the bat, I really like how easy it is to access the internals on this case. Just two thumb screws at the back to remove that top panel, and then the side panels, they just pop out via these uh, clips on the top, and you can remove them both. Temper glass on either side, and right now, well, I gotta figure out what our configuration is gonna be for our all-in-one liquid cooler, because we have a 360 rad, but you might notice this case has a top-mounted power supply. There's the little uh, dock for it right there. Fractal's bringing that back, and uh, it actually is a pretty good implementation of it, but it does mean we can't have a long radiator across the the top. The case comes with three 140s mounted in the bottom and two 180s mounted as intakes up there in the front. My plan was to swap all those with the RGB variants, however, uh, we gotta figure out where our 360 rad will go. So of course we could do the 360 across the bottom like that, but everyone would be like, oh my gosh, Paul, what a horrible idea, because then your CPU block is gonna be up there and the pump's gonna die. But wait, the pump in this AIO is down in the radiator, right there. So the pump would actually still be at the lowest point if it was installed across the bottom. But I still don't really want to put it here because I'd either have to have these tubes going up and around the graphics card, which I just, I don't feel like is a good idea, or I'd need to put them down in this end, in which case the tubing might uh, have to stretch quite a bit to get over to the CPU if it would fit at all. So I think the radiator is gonna need to go in the front, which means I'm gonna need to remove the 180s and I'm not gonna be able to use 180s up there. However, I can put the 180s in the bottom. Three 140s or two 180s in the bottom is the biggest question I have right now. And I think I'm gonna to need to stick with the tubing at the top here in order to reach over to the CPU with hopefully a little bit of aesthetically pleasing uh, slack on those tubes. That said, here's a quick look at accessories, screws and all the uh, usual accessories there. Here's my fan replacement kit, which I'll swap in in just a moment. And then I do have these fan brackets and these are actually for the front right there because right now it's set up with brackets in the 180 position, but these you swap in if you want to mount 120s or 140s up there. So I think we should start by getting the case set up properly, swapping in the fan hub and getting the fan situation sorted out. Here's a quick side-by-side -side of the old and new fan hub. The new one is on the bottom and it is labeled V1.1 and it looks like they added some, some grounding. So that's good to have. These metal contact points here will help ground the hub to the case. All right, at this point I have all the fans installed, swapped for RGB models, and we went with the 360 rad up here in the front as previously planned. Now this doesn't have a removable bracket as is often convenient for installing radiators. They just have these two side brackets, but I feel like it's a good solution because it allows them to be flexible. It comes pre-installed with the 180s here in the front and without the brackets that allows plenty of ventilation, but then with the brackets you can move them in closer or a little bit further away if you're going with 120s or 140s there. So it is convenient that our 360 rad is already installed and uh, it looks like I've got plenty of length on the tubing to get over there to where the CPU block is going to be. And again, with the pump integrated into the radiator here, there's still plenty of room up above, so uh, you shouldn't have any issues with it pulling in air bubbles or anything like that. I've been trying to do some early cable management, routing cables back and through where they'll be most discreet, doing a few uh, tie downs so far. And as you can see, I went with the dual 180s down in the bottom just because uh, th these fans are so cool. They're so beefy and thick and I wanted to make sure I used them. So those are gonna be providing a ton of airflow as intake from the bottom. Got an exhaust installed on the back and the 140 there as well. So this is definitely gonna be a positive pressure oriented case with lots of intakes going on. But I just appreciate a lot of the attention to detail that Fractal's made here. For instance, uh, when you're riding the cable for the pump over, they did a little notch in the side of the radiator so you could feed the cable through and just make it a little bit more clean. But I think that's all the case setup that we can manage for right now. Let's get the motherboard set up and then we can install everything into the case.
And just like that, we have almost everything installed and it's, it's looking like the build's like ready to go. I should be able to just pop in the graphics card like that and we can give it a test boot. But uh, there is one small issue that still needs to be addressed. Doesn't that look lovely? <laughs> so cable management is its own subtle art and I'm gonna do my best to just plug in the things that are important. So we got the power supply plugs coming down here. The extension's already plugged into the motherboard. We'll help out with some of those. I have a lot of RGB LEDs. Fortunately, all this fractal gear just uses the standard three pin addressable RGB header connectors and all of the fans are daisy chained on there. I haven't checked this motherboard, but a typical motherboard RGB LED header, the addressable ones can handle something like 400 to 600 LEDs. So I should be able to daisy chain these all together off of one or possibly two of the motherboard RGB headers. Then I have some smaller power cables that uh, fortunately I took the time to label like this three pin fan header, which is actually for the pump. I wanna plug that directly into the motherboard. And then the rest of the fan headers, I'm going to route to our newly installed and upgraded fan hub. That said, this is gonna be a lot of work tying this all in. So uh, give me a few minutes here and I'll see what I can do. So even though you don't have like a power supply basement in this case, there's a pretty good amount of space behind the motherboard tray, between the motherboard tray and the tempered glass side panel. It's wide enough that you can fit a couple 3.5 inch drives back here. And then there's four 2.5 inch drive mounts as well. Fortunately, we're not using any of those. So I've been able to use like one of the 3.5 inch bays to wrap up a lot of the RGB LED cables because there was a decent amount of that. Overall, I would give my cable management today, I don't know, B? maybe a B minus depending on how critical you're being. Uh, it could definitely be a little bit prettier, but I do believe everything is plugged in properly. And all we have left is to feed down three of our PCI Express graphics connectors, plug in our cable extensions here. And now I can feed these through to get them in the right position to install our graphics card. We're almost done. So I might have just discovered a major oversight on my part as I've gone through this build. Did you guys spot it as I was moving along? Don't worry, we'll come back to it in just a second. For now, I've got the cable management all managed for the most part. I've got the graphics card installed and I've got my uh, extensions trained reasonably well. They're being a little bit finicky and I kind of wish these cable extensions had one more set of combs on there so I could train them back a little bit further. But I think after a day or two, they might be a little bit more malleable and I can make them look a little bit prettier, but it's not too bad for now. For now, what I really want to do is switch on the power switch and I see some power going to some things, so that's good. And press the, uh, the old power button there to power the thing on, because uh, you guys might have also noticed that I skipped over the outside of the box build, which is something that I often do. But in this case, I was like, it's new hardware. What could go wrong? It seems like it's in pretty decent shape. So I'm happy to say it seems like it's powering on for the time being. I'm so torn right now because we're so close to being finished and yet also so far. So if you guys didn't notice, my big fail was not noticing that the radiator should have been on the inside of these brackets. With the fans mounted to the front of the radiator, there's not enough space for this front panel to actually snap into place. There's not enough clearance back there even after I removed the dust filter that's uh, installed there by default. So what I need to do before this video ends is swap that radiator to the other side of that bracket so the fans can have clearance with the front panel and then also get windows installed so I can install some RGB software so we can get the lighting aligned a little bit better. And then I think we can finish this video. So uh, why don't we jump ahead to when I've done that right now. And just as promised, I'm back. Systems put together and fixed up just right. But how did I do it? So the first step was to fix my somewhat embarrassing mistake of mounting the fans and the radiator improperly on those two front brackets. Fortunately, I was able to unmount that whole thing with just four screws and I didn't have to undo too much of my cable management. I only had to snip a couple zip ties that I put down there when I first installed the fans. And then I was able to remove each bracket individually and shift it forward to be in between the radiator and the fans instead of mounted to this side of the radiator. And by doing one side of that and then the other, I was able to keep that whole unit kind of together. I had to do a little bit 
bit of finagling to shift the brackets up so it would be mounted in the right position. But the good news is I didn't have to undo any of the major cable management I did in the back of the case, so that was nice. Beyond that, I had a few other little things to take care of, and I want to show you those. So let me pop off the side panel real quick and get my other camera. So I took another swing at these cable extensions, and while the 24 pin is actually looking quite nice, these three eight pin ones for the graphics cards were not. And while the quality on these cable extensions is pretty nice, they are actually made with a curve in mind, and it's unfortunately curved the wrong way for my setup. If my plugs here on top were flipped, it would naturally curve the right direction, but what I actually ended up doing was grabbing some cable combs that I had from a different power supply and adding them in right here, and these actually kind of gripped the cables, so that allowed me to train them in such a way that at least kept the front part of it here looking reasonably aesthetically pleasing. It would be really nice if they included more of these built-in cable combs, but it only comes with two but by adding the third one on there and doing a little zip tie action down there and just training them up as much as I can, I think I've got it to a reasonable configuration. I also decided to add the GPU support bracket and I went with the one that came with the Fractal Torrent case because uh, it's pretty low profile and it blends in and it's pretty flexible. It's tucked back there at the corner of the graphics card. The fans aren't spinning right now because the graphics card's not hot enough. And what I ended up with was a, a kind of an ugly little section right there at the corner of this graphics card with the uh, untrained parts of the cables and that bracket. But Unfortunately, from most angles that you're going to be viewing this system at, you're not going to see that part at all, so I think it's okay. Lastly, I wanted to get the RGB set up, so I actually ended up using two pieces of software for that. We have the RGB Fusion 2.0 software, and that's what comes with the Gigabyte motherboard. It's like okay software. It's not that great. It can't really do much with the addressable feature, but at least if you have everything connected to the three-pin addressable headers on the motherboard, which I was able to do, because the PowerColor Red Devil 6900 XT does have an RGB addressable header on it, and I, I plug the cable in right there. It's not in the best spot, but I was able to kind of tuck it back there. And it has a daisy chain on it, so I ran it down to this bottom plug and integrated it there. And then I was able to get the Devil Zone Red Devil software, and it has a, a few different color options too, but you just need to select Synchronize with Motherboard. And that allowed me to get all the RGB lights synced. And I found that the most appealing color configuration was either just a static color or the basic color shift, where it's kind of taking all of the lights and going from one color to the next. Because like I said, this RGB Fusion software is functional enough, but uh, it doesn't really do anything with the addressable RGB lights. It just, you know, it just allows them to function. With that sorted though, I deemed the build to be complete, so I was able to do the final build things. Peeling the protective plastic off the tempered glass is an important ritual for any PC build, of course, but then I was able to get a look at the finished build. So I think this build turned out beautifully, and I think it has a really nice balance between aesthetics and functionality, because it's going to have a ton of airflow, especially with these two massive 180 millimeter intake fans at the bottom, and just a really nice hardware configuration. I was able to plug in the XMP values for our DDR4-3600 memory kit from G-Skill, and pairing that with the 5950X and the RX 6900 XT Red Devil from PowerColor just means this is going to be a beastly gaming system. Speaking of which, I will be doing a follow-up video in about a week's time where I'll be demonstrating some of the capabilities of this system, and I will also be kicking off the giveaway at that point too. So it's not ready quite yet, so don't be looking for a giveaway entry down in the description. That will kick off next week along with the testing video for this build. So I need to say a huge, huge thank you to AMD for sponsoring this video, sponsoring this build, and giving me the opportunity to give away a system like this to my lucky viewers at home. Big thank you to Fractal as well for providing the torrent case, the fans, the uh, CPU cooler, and the power supply. Guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button. Links to all the parts I used are down in the video's description, as well as a link to my store at paulshardware.net where you can help support my channel by buying yourself some merch, t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, that sort of thing. It's all really nice. Thanks again for watching this video, you guys, and we'll see you in the next one.